Hello, I'm Marco Normand. I'm Senior Lecturer in British Studies at Université Paul Valéry Montpellier 3. Uh, I'm primarily a scholar of trade union history and industrial relations. In my research, I've looked at the evolution of trade unions and their responses to neoliberal policies and incoming austerity policies from the 1970s. And I'm Simon Dawes. I'm a lecturer in British Studies and Cultural Industries at the Université de Versailles Saint-Quentin en Yvelines. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the neoliberalisation of media policy in the UK, uh, as well as uh, theories of neoliberalism and liberal theories of press freedom and things like that. Particularly outside of, of academia at the moment, since the, the financial crash, uh, the word neoliberalism has been used more and more uh, by more and more people uh, without necessarily understanding what the term means or agreeing on, on what the term means. So it's something that people are talking about quite a lot. Um, and in, inside academia, uh, it depends on which discipline you're in, I think. There are some disciplines in which they have had a decade's worth of um, theoretical and uh, methodological debate uh, about what neoliberalism is, whether it exists or not, how best to analyse it, and other disciplines that have been lagging behind somewhat. Um, so I think it was important for us to, to look at uh, the fact that the word neoliberalism is used a lot when we talk about different aspects of the anglophone world uh, to assess the extent to which it is or isn't a useful word uh, to use and to highlight the different uh, perspectives that are, that are drawn on different academic perspectives, different disciplines, the different theoretical and methodological approaches. Uh, not necessary to argue that one is better than others but just to present the, the diversity of different approaches to studying various aspects of the neoliberal anglophone world. And there's also this sense that the uh, use of the term has become so inflated that no one knows what it means anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. so there are now some academic journals, for example, that refuse to accept any article that uses the word neoliberalism um, without uh, making it explicit which theoretical position you're adopting, which theorists of neoliberalism you're using, um, so it's important, I think, for us um, to question whether the word uh, is useful. Um, but if we do use it, we can't just use it and assume that everyone understands uh, what we mean. We have to actually engage with the literature on, on the subject. So these debates in the field of uh, literature, uh, specialising in neoliberalism, is pretty much structured around the sort of axis of Marxist or Marx-inspired approaches versus or combined with uh, Foucault and Foucauldian approaches? Yeah, so there are the broadly uh, two different camps. So there are those who argue that neoliberalism um, is a, an ideology, that we can talk about neoliberal hegemony, and these people tend to adopt a, a Marxist, broadly Marxist approach, often uh, using uh, Gramsci. Uh, they would cite David Harvey and or Stuart Hall on neoliberalism. Uh, and then we have uh, the different camp, which would be the Foucauldian or post-Foucauldian camp, who would cite Foucault's lectures um, from 1979, his book um, at The Birth of Biopolitics, and lots of uh, literature that ha has been written by others since then using Foucault's uh, ideas, uh, who talk more about neoliberalism as a form of governmentality rather than ideology. Um, and then there are also those who draw on both approaches, who argue that there is, uh, uh, we can make bridges between these approaches, and, and there are others who argue that you cannot, they are two fundamentally different approaches. But what's important for us with this issue, I think, was just showing, again, the diversity, so as long as um, the authors were engaging with um, the literatures and uh, situating their own perspective within these debates, um, that was the, the, the main thing. This special issue of Angles uh, is a follow-up to a conference that Mark and I organised in Montpellier uh, in 2017 on neoliberalism in the anglophone world. Um, and it was very important for us to, to show this diversity of topics, diversity of approaches, uh, by getting contributions from all the various sub-disciplines of English studies in France, 
So we had British and American civilizationists, we had British and American literature uh, people, uh, linguists, um, as well as people from all sorts of different disciplines from the Anglophone world. We've got analysis of uh, public policy in uh, certain specific areas, uh, we've got discussions of uh, economic policy, employment policy, and also the effects of neoliberal economic policies on a society and on bodies. And finally, we've also got um, articles dealing more with representations, representing uh, neoliberalism and the crisis, um, either in terms, in visual terms, in terms of visual studies analysis, or more in terms of uh, linguistic analysis, or at least the analysis of uh, rhetoric in, in discourse. And the issue ends with a, a paper on resistance Indeed. as well. Um, and this happened uh, just after uh, the Brexit vote in the UK and the election of Trump in the US. So those issues were on the minds of everyone um, at the conference. And it's issues like this, events uh, like this, uh, which many people would argue are consequences of neoliberalism, they're consequences of uh, austerity policies that have been pursued um, around the world after the financial crash. Um, uh, so as you'll see in all of the articles uh, in the issue, these issues are mentioned at least briefly uh, quite a lot. And we're filming this video introduction in the middle of the Yellow Vest protest in France, a protest against the French iteration of the neoliberal agenda. And uh, there's also relevance to our immediate context in academia. Academia has been one of the testing grounds for neoliberal policies in the UK and France, among others. I mean, if you look around you and consider uh, the increasing workload, top-down management, uh, project funding, all the talk of excellence, well, think neoliberalism. Uh, right, so I guess that's it for the two of us. Uh, we hope you enjoy the issue.